So there you are, you're working on a project and you're uncertain about the next move forward. You don't know exactly how to do the thing that you're imagining or what steps are needed to be taken to get you to a completion point, what direction to move in. And you know, you're gonna be real uncertain at that point, but you're gonna need to stumble forward, take some little step in a direction, do some epsilon of work to move closer to that goal. And frankly, your tastes are so much further past your skills to produce the quality of work that your your tastes would appreciate that it's it's frustrating <laughs> it's frustrating to make any kind of progress on whatever it is you're working on because you don't know what you're doing you don't know the direction you need to go in and you don't have any idea where to start that is a very familiar place to be when you're learning when you're doing something on your own and you're a one person team, right? That's, that's the human condition in a lot of ways. In my case, I am not a front end developer, okay? Making something pretty, a website that people want to actually go to, they enjoy looking at, it's it's easy to navigate. I love the layout of this thing. I'm, I'm not that, I, I can't make that yet. Maybe ever, okay? I understand the tools involved. I can read the code behind the magic that's happening. Awesome. Uh, I'm just not very good at the design. What I think is cool and looks good uh, is not what other people think is cool and looks good, okay? Uh, the first website I ever published, mm, my friend and my wife both came to me and said, we need to talk about your website. <laughs> that's that's how bad it was. Okay, we're talking black background, red text, because I like race cars, okay? And people don't like that. It's not very easy on the eyes. When you get that kind of royal blue on a black background, oh, it looks so good to me. It's not so good to the general public. So <laughs> not only do I not know what I'm doing with website design, uh, <laughs> what I tend to enjoy isn't exactly what's going to be the most pleasing for whatever audience you're making a website for. I'm making a website for. Uh, <laughs> this is where trade-offs come in, right? It's an opportunity cost in every project you're doing. Whether, if you're working on X, you can't work on Y. You invest in X, you can't invest in Y, all right? So what could I do in my situation? Well, I could hire a front-end developer, sure, but that would be kind of a trade-off. How do I pay them? I don't have cash to pay them. Do I give them equity of the thing that I'm building? I, I don't know. Who would do that kind of work? And second, I don't really want to do that. I want to keep this contained in-house right now. Okay, what's the trade-off? Well, you're going to have to figure out how to make this thing pretty. <laughs> just in my case, that's what I got to do. I got to dive into not just the back-end stuff, but the front-end stuff. Okay. <laughs> To me, that's that's overwhelming. There's a lot of stuff going on there. I can read HTML. I understand HTML. I get CSS. It makes sense to me. JavaScript, I only have experience in TypeScript. But it's basically the same thing except for static typing. Okay, not a big problem. How do all those fit together? How do I get what I've got here and make it good over here? Looking at that whole jumble is overwhelming. <laughs> So the way that I've gone about fixing that is just focus right on the HTML. I'm just making something show up and it's not pretty and it's cluttered. But hey, this database is in a table on a web page. Look at that. It's just a white background, bunch of text, but it's up there and it works. And so I can make the HTML display exactly what I want it to display and piecewise step through these different technologies to make my thing happen. The trade-off there is I'm not working on making it pretty right away. I'm not working on expanding the back end or working on the cloud infrastructure that's needed to host it. Um, nope, right now I'm just doing markup language and Django's templating language, which is basically that. It's great. Django is a back end framework that I'm packaging all this stuff into. Awesome. So there's an example of what I'm working on and 
how it relates to trade-offs is that you're, you're not going to be certain about what to do, but you're going to have to make a decision and stumble forward through that uncertainty. <laughs> Use the time you've got now to just get this one part done. And as you stumble forward towards that goal, new revelations will come to you. At the end of this whole HTML debacle, I'll be able to see like, oh, I, now I'm going to work on the CSS part of it. Make it pretty. Okay, now I'm going to move into HTMX so it has a little more functionality on the front end and keeps me out of the whole JavaScript pool of... That is an, that is an endless black hole to dive into. Sure, sure, sure. And I don't know what that thing is yet. But I'm just focusing here. And by the time I get to the end of the road, I'll have a little more knowledge about what I need to do to go forward. I've made that trade-off. I've made that bet that right now what I need to focus on is just what is on the web page. And that's exactly what you have to do. When you get to that uncertain place, you've, you've completed a milestone in the past and you don't know what to do to go forward, I suggest remapping whatever your project is, remapping the steps needed to make that completed project. So you have some vision in your head of whatever it is you're building, whatever it is you're doing. Maybe you're just trying to get six-pack abs, okay? <laughs> Maybe you're making a birthday card for your mom. Whatever it is, write down what you're trying to build and steps that are still needed to get to that thing, okay? Chunk-wise, like, like piece-wise, um, what, what's the word? Break it up into chunks. And when you break it up into chunks, you'll have a better idea for where to start and make that trade-off <laughs> between X, Y, Z. Right now, focus on X. For me, that uncertainty part gets really, really uncomfortable because you, I get to a place in a project I'm building and it's done. I can use it. It's still kind of cumbersome because there's no UI, but I can use it. But how do I package that into something that other people can use? That's that's pleasant on the eyes to actually show up and want to use it. That is an uncertain point for me. And where do I go forward? And I don't know these things. And learning sucks. <laughs> learning, it's always worth it. You always dive in and learn something new and you grow from it. And eventually you master it. And, and it's, a, it's a part of you. It's a part of your, your toolbox. It's something you can use. But when you first start, like I said earlier, your tastes will outpace your skills so you know what you want to do but getting there feels like climbing up mount everest you you spend three hours doing something that you thought you could probably get done in 30 minutes and pushing through that uncertainty because that's the the uncertainty the discomfort of learning you don't know what you're doing you're not making as much progress but what you you have to realize is on the back end of your brain your brain is is growing it's struggling with these new things and it's integrating it into who you are and what you can do. And that little trade-off later becomes an amazing treasure tra treasure chest that, <laughs> that you can you can later dig into and and spend those tokens however you want. That's that's all I gotta say, really, is just push through that discomfort of not knowing what to do. Push through the discomfort of I'm focusing on X, but I really got to get to Z. And when X, Y, and Z are all added up, I have this final thing built. Great, great, great. But none of it's going to get done if you don't start at X. If you don't push through that difficult stopping the block in front of you. Okay? In the creative sphere, some people call it writer's block, right? You don't know exactly where to go forward with, uh, with the manuscript that you're putting together. Sure, sure. So how did they overcome that? Go read some books. Uh, On Writing by Stephen King is amazing. Uh, there's a lot of different methods to do it. But I guess what I'm suggesting is you just throw stuff at the wall. You just sit down and you write and you write and you write until finally something pops out. And you go, that's the direction to go in. It's the same thing but applied to whatever your project is. Just choose the direction, walk down the path. And if you spend a week doing X and it isn't paying off, you can always pivot to Y, okay? The point is you're moving forward. That's what's important. And you, you're gonna be just fine. <laughs>
push through the discomfort of learning. You'll be just fine. Okay? Good luck on whatever you're doing. I'll talk to you later.